All right, today we're going to be looking at the section concerning the temptation of Jesus. This covers Matthew 4, 1 to 11, Mark 1, 12 and 13, and Luke 4, 1 to 13, section 25, or paragraph 25. Now, this could be termed the, the second approval uh, of the Messiah. The first was, of course, his baptism, when God the Father spoke and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased, the Holy Spirit came down upon him. And right after that, uh, as we see in, this, in these passages, the Holy Spirit takes Jesus out into the wilderness, and he is tempted there. And uh, have the successful completion of that, the, the resistance of that temptation, uh, then provides a, a second approval of Jesus as the Messiah, the sinless Son of God. All right, let's look at the questions that you have here together. Uh, first of all, number 175, this was pretty easy. Hopefully everybody got this. Who brought Jesus to temptation? Let's everybody say it together. Ready? One, two, three. Spirit. The Spirit or the Holy Spirit, right? All right. Uh, next one, number 176, uh, was an evaluate question. Of what significance is the temptation in relation to his recent baptism relative to, one, the presence of the Holy Spirit, Two, the purpose of his baptism, and three, the declaration at his baptism. All right, let's see how we do with this. First of all, what significance is the temptation in relationship to the presence of the Holy Spirit? So, in other words, what what is the uh, connection there concerning the Holy Spirit? What, anybody have an answer? Brenna. The Holy Spirit was inside him, and it helped him. To guide him through the temptation to help him to avoid it. Okay, that's probably true, although we don't have that specifically stated. Is there anything stated here concerning the Holy Spirit, Luke? I put the Holy Spirit led him to the wilderness. Yeah, the Holy Spirit who anointed him as baptism was the one who led him to the wilderness for testing. So, in other words, this was part of the divine plan. How many of you had that he led the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness? Only a few of you. Okay, I, uh, that, I, I thought that would probably seem uh, relatively simple uh, since we had that at the very beginning. The Holy Spirit led him. <clears throat> uh, okay, I think, I think you should be able to, uh, to see that. So we're going to count that as a point. Next, the purpose of his baptism. All right, so in other words, you're comparing the purpose of his baptism with the purpose of uh, the uh, temptation. Okay, anybody have an answer for that? Kayla? The purpose of Jesus' baptism was, to, was for him to experience the call for speaking with faith, and it was to prepare him for the call for giving us peace and courage from the Comforter. Okay, then how does that relate to his temptation? It was empowering him, it's giving him strength and courage for oh, the temptation. For the temptation, yes. okay. Yes. Okay, if you said that, I didn't uh, catch it. Um, okay. Uh, anything else? I put, um, <clears throat> Satan wanted, wanted to disprove that Jesus was righteous. Okay, so on the one hand, the Father is saying, here's my beloved Son, and then the next saint is trying to disprove that, uh, to uh, show that Jesus wasn't righteous, right? So that righteousness was being tested. Uh, so the, the baptism was a way... Uh, was the, the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Uh, the temptation was to demonstrate that he was suitable for the task of ministry by proving his sinlessness. That kind of relates to what Kayla said. So as baptism, Jesus was fulfilling all righteousness. Remember that? Uh, John said, I, I need to be baptized by you. And Jesus said, no, you need to baptize me to fulfill all righteousness. And as and at the temptation... That righteousness was being tested. You know, was he really righteous? And of course, we see that he was. All right, that one may have been a little difficult for you, so we'll discount that as a bonus if you think you have an answer that is suitable. Any questions about your answer? All right, the third part the declaration at his baptism. Okay, what was the declaration? Let's just talk about this together on this one. What was the declaration at his baptism? What was the declaration? Come on, this isn't that hard. 
Marissa, what was his declaration? What was the declaration at his baptism? That he was the son of God. Right. Why are you so reluctant to put your hands up to, to give these answers? The, the, the declaration is that he is the son of God. All right, so how does that relate then to the temptation? Sam, how does that relate? Um, it just shows his commitment to God. Say that louder. It shows his commitment to God. His commitment to God? Um, that wasn't in question at the baptism, was it? Was the declaration that it, that Jesus was committed to God? Was that simply the declaration? No, it says he's the son of God. John the Baptist was committed to God. Elijah was committed to God. Joseph and Mary were both committed to God. Is that what's in view here in the temptation? What, what's in view in the temptation related to the declaration? If the declaration as baptism was that he is the Son of God, then what is in question at the temptation? Joel? That he isn't the Son of God? Yeah. So, that, that he isn't that Son of God. He isn't that righteous one. All right? That, that's uh, somewhat in question. Although, in the temptation, I have to say that uh, contrary to what a lot of people have proclaimed over the years, when Satan says, if you're the son of God, he's not really questioning that he's the son of God, but he is trying to get him to do something unrighteous, to, uh, to sin. Uh, and maybe we'll talk about that um, as we go on here. Uh, let's go on to 177 then. Any question about your answer number three? I'll give you a bonus if you've got anything close to what we said. Luke? Go ahead and Messiah over. I said, <clears throat> yeah, like, because I put Satan wanted to tempt Jesus not to be able to be the Messiah. Okay. Uh, did you talk about the, uh, let's see, the declaration. Did you talk about the declaration at his baptism of being as being the, the Son of God? I don't think so. All right, that was the question asked uh, concerning the declaration at his baptism. So you need to mention that in order to get a full bonus point there. Anybody else? All right, let's go to uh, number 177. I hope nobody missed this one. Who tempted Jesus? Who wants this softball? <coughs> Griff? Sa did you say Satan? Yeah, that's right. Satan. <laughs> I just like to mess with you, Griff. <laughs> that's why I don't put my hand up. <laughs> right, any questions about that? All right, next I ask you to uh, make a chart. Indicating the specific temptation, the category of the temptation, according to 1 John 2.16, and Jesus' answer. All right, so uh, hopefully you can check your chart as we go along here. All right, so let's see, the first temptation, see, yeah, you're supposed to put the temptation, the category, and Jesus' answer. Okay, uh, what was the first temptation? Haley? Um, stone, turn the stone into bread. Yeah, turn the stone into bread. Everybody got that? Okay, let me let me go back to what I uh, started to say before because I don't see any questions that come up, that come up and uh, talk about that. Uh, our translations say that when Satan was tempting Jesus, that he started out by saying, "If you're the Son of God, turn this these stones into bread." Right? Now, when we say "if," and I'm clause, uh, we generally mean something to the effect that we don't know whether it's true or not, right? Say, well, if I go to the store, I'm not sure if I am or not, right? But in Greek, uh, when you have, a, this is called a conditional clause, when you have the word if at the beginning of a clause, uh, it, it can be stated in such a way as to indicate what the person who is saying it thinks about the, the condition. In other words, there's a first-class condition in which uh, the if has the idea that it is true. So in this case, he's saying, if you are the Son of God, and inherent in the, in the statement is that he believes that he is the Son of God. So many times, I like to translate it as since. And I think that's what Satan is saying here. He's not questioning whether 
Jesus is the Son of God or not, or, or making Jesus question. Uh, I've heard a, a preacher say that, uh, and, I, and I don't think that's the case here. He's saying, since you're the Son of God, you can do this. Yeah. But Satan doesn't know all because he is not God. And um, he probably, well, this is just like what my, I believe what my dad has taught me and stuff. That he was, you know, he knew that Jesus was a righteous man. He knew that he was of God. <clears throat> he was pretty positive that Jesus was the son of God. But he had to figure it out because he does not know all. No, but he knew Jesus was the son of God. If even his lowly demons that Jesus comes across later say to him, what do we have to do with you, Son of God? Have you come to send us into a torment before our time? And over and over again, demons are saying, we know who you are. That was after the temptation, or after he figured out that he was the Son of God because he was just a temptation. Well, I, I don't, I, I think that's um, a bit of a speculation. Um, and, and I'm basing it on the language. The language here indicates that Satan does believe what he's saying is true. Uh, although it could be, the first class condition could be used in instances where a person is uh, saying for the sake of argument, let's say that this is true. But I, I, to, to think that Satan doesn't know who Jesus is, um, yeah, Satan doesn't know everything, but he certainly, since he spent time with uh, Jesus as the Son of God in heaven, uh, before he sinned, he, he certainly would know who he was. He wasn't in bodily form yet, though. Yeah, but he's a. I don't. I don't see any indication anywhere that he wouldn't have known who he was. Okay. Uh, so I, I would disagree with, with that idea. Okay. Uh, he's saying, since you're the son of God. In other words, the temptation was not to prove he was the son of God. It was to use his powers as the son of God to relieve his physical hunger. That was the temptation to, to use the power that he had in order to. Um, to do what was satisfying to himself, you know, to be rather selfish, although we wouldn't think eating eating something was necessarily a selfish act, but uh, that was the temptation. All right, so, and that, and that relates to the category of 1 John 2.16, and what's the category there? What category does this temptation fit into? Stephen? Desire of the flesh. Right, desire of the flesh. Any question there? All right, and then what was Jesus' answer? Emma? Right. Man doesn't live by bread alone, and the rest of it is, but by every word that comes from the Father, every word that comes from God. That's, that's what true life is, is what comes from God. All right, and any questions? One point for each of these items. All right, what was the next temptation? No. To worship Satan. All right, and um, what? Let's see. What was the uh, category that fits into that? Lexi. Yeah, pride of life. And uh, what? Um, wait a minute. Who's that? No, 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 no. Um, I think I, have my, I might have my order mixed up. Let's see. Was the second the second temptation where he shows them all the kingdoms, or was one he told him to throw them off the self off? The it was throw himself off. Okay. I I uh, somehow my my chart I got the uh, two. Uh, mixed up. So this is where he, he takes him to the pinnacle of the temple and says, throw yourself off. Okay, that wasn't uh, the one to worship him then. Uh, so what, what was the temptation there? The, in the second one, John? Testing God. Uh, yes, by, do, do you understand that? How was he testing God? How was Satan tempting Jesus to test God? In what way was would he be testing God by throwing himself off the pinnacle of the temple? Understand that this, this is taking him to a high point in the temple, uh, probably right above the Kidron Valley, which is a very deep valley right beside the temple wall. So if you jump off of there, you're going to die. And so Satan is saying, look, jump off. God will save you. So, well, 
Um, if, if he jumped off and died, then there would be no savior. And God, if if God really but wouldn't God him, save him? Yeah, that's what I'm getting to. Okay. <laughs> so so if he died, then there would be no savior. So God would have to save him. Oh, okay. And so what would that prove? Or, or why is that a testing of God? You, you kind of said it, but I just want you to be uh, a little more clear for everybody to understand. Because he's making God save Jesus. Yeah. Jesus jumped off. Yeah. It's like saying, I know God will protect me so I can go step in front of the car coming down the road, right? Because um, God's going to be with me. Uh, so he's saying, don't test God. Yeah, God may protect you, but don't test him. Now, what the, the background behind what Satan is doing here relates to uh, some tradition that was around uh, among the Jewish people uh, that, that one of the signs of the Messiah would be that he would jump off the temple and God would save him. So, remember, there's a lot of prophetic uh, um, indications of, about the Messiah in the Old Testament, a lot of things. But the Jews came up with a bunch more stuff themselves that, that they thought they thought Messiah would do. And one, one of them was him jump, jumping off the pinnacle of the temple. God would save him. Then they would know that he's the real Messiah. So what Satan is tempting Jesus to do here is not just to test God, like Joel said, because he's going to be the Savior, so he can't die there, but also to show everybody who he is. Uh, and uh, for everybody to say, oh, look, he, he is the Messiah. Look, he's floating down on angels as they're saving him from destruction. All right, so what uh, then of uh, the categories in First John would that relate to? Noel? I said cloud of light. Yeah, because it, it's really saying, look at me. You know, God saved me. So prior to life, how many of you agreed with that? Prior to life. Okay, good. All right, then the third one was uh, what was given before, I think. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that, what happens there? Will somebody like, give me a restatement of that. Amelia, what do you have for the, the third temptation there? Um, oh, wait a minute. Well, oh, did, we, did we state Jesus' answer? No. <laughs> okay, we kind of talked about it, but we didn't say what it was. Okay, what was Jesus' answer? Amelia, give me that one. Um, the... Like, then you shouldn't like, the Lord your God to Yeah, yeah. So don't don't test God. All right. So let's go to the, the third one then. What's the uh, the third temptation, Morgan? Mm -hmm. Right. If you bow down to to, the, to Satan, he'll give you all the kingdoms. So wh what is that? What is Satan uh, saying here? Well, why would this be an attractive thing for Jesus? Well, how is this a temptation? Bowing down to Satan? Why? To get all the kingdoms. Why would that be attractive? What would that mean that Jesus wouldn't have to do? He wouldn't have to die on the cross. Right? If Satan gives him all the kingdoms, then he doesn't have to die to get them. Alright, so what, what category does that fit into? Sam? I have, um, I have material possessions. Material possessions? Did you did you get that from First John two sixteen? No. Okay, that's, that's what it says, doesn't it? Um, to yeah, the category of each temptation from First John two sixteen. Now you're close in what you said anyway. I'll probably give give it to you, but that's not what it says there. No, what do you have? I don't have anything. Did you put any categories down? Yeah. Just not that one? I did it again. It's amazing. Landon, what do you have? I had the material, the same thing. Okay, where'd you get that? Uh, I forget where I got that. Not, not, okay, you're, you're in the right, you're on the right track, but not from the verse. Griff? Desires of the eyes. Yeah, desires of the eyes. Desires of the eyes is what uh, First John says. Uh, because G did Jesus want the, all the kingdoms of the world? Yeah. But what was his answer to that? What is Jesus' answer? Jonas? Um, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Yeah. You're, you're not supposed to worship anybody but the Lord God. So I can't worship you, Satan. Sorry. 
That's, that would violate what God has commanded. All right, so any, any questions about the this chart then? There are uh, nine possible points there. For the uh, last temptation I put showed all the kingdoms of the world. Yeah, okay. uh, well, just showing them isn't the temptation, but <clears throat> how you get them is the temptation. So if you just had showing them, I guess we'll give you half a point. But uh, the temptation was was in uh, saying, worship me, and I'll give them to you. Okay, any others? All right, 179. Uh, from what Old Testament book did Jesus quote? In resisting Satan. Nate? Matthew. Uh, no, the, the, the account given to us was written by Matthew, but Jesus is not quoting from Matthew because Matthew hadn't been written yet. Matthew's writing down what Jesus said. But well, where is he quoting? Noah. <laughs> Do you have something written down? You don't, man. I, I hit it again. Uh, let's see. No, he hasn't answered in a while. Has everybody answered a question today? Oh no, Sean, you haven't answered anything. You're sitting there shaking your head. Yes, everybody answered a question when you yourself have not answered a question. Are you just trying to fake me out? Yeah. yeah instead, you drew my attention to. You. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. So, what answer do you have there? No, I <laughs> uh, Jordan, this is not that hard. All your Bibles, if it, if it doesn't, I'd be very surprised, have little notations that when there's a quotation, it tells you where it came from. Anybody not see that in their Bibles? Uh, so they all came from Deuteronomy. All, all the quotations that Jesus gives come from Deuteronomy. Now, what's the significance of that? Is there any? Why? Why does he quote from Deuteronomy? What's Deuteronomy? Do, do you know anything about Deuteronomy? Except it's hard to spell. Aren't a lot of the rules in there? Yeah. In fact, you know, Deuteronomy. Uh, I, I think it's always helpful to know what a word means. Deuteronomy. Dut. D e u t. Anybody know what that? Means what that part of the word means, or do what? What if I said duo? What's duo? Two. Two. And onomy, onomos, is law. The word means second law. So in other words, after the law is given in Exodus, now here's a second law. Here's the the book that explains all the laws. So it's the book of the law. It's the book that God gave to the Israelites to follow, and so. Jesus is referring back to the book of Deuteronomy uh, to answer the temptations of Satan because that's the book of the law. That's the law, of, the law of God. You know, what better source would there be than that? All right, Deuteronomy, you should have been able to figure out. Uh, paragraph 180 was a bonus question. Evaluate what twofold aim did Satan have in the temptation? Uh, we kind of talked about this before. But uh, what would you say are the two points? Anybody think they've got it here? Uh, Kayla? Satisfy God by turning the sun against him and to gain power over the kingdom for there being no salvation. Um, the first part was, again, you said? Despite God by turning the sun against him. Despite God? Yes. By turning the sun against yes, him? Yes, who is the worship of Satan. Okay, so um, basically that, yeah, so that would be a, kind of a power play uh, to uh, create a situation where, where Satan really is gaining the power because Jesus is giving it up to him. And what else? What other reason would there be? Luke? I put uh, Satan wanted to disprove, <clears throat> disprove Jesus. Yeah, so to discredit him is another word we could use there to... to uh, prove that he wasn't righteous, and there, thereby it would uh, divert him from his task. He wouldn't be able to, to be the sinless sacrifice. Okay, uh, if, you, if you think you had one of those two, give yourself a bonus point, uh, or if you had both of those ideas. Uh, one, to discredit Jesus, 
and uh, and, there, and thereby he wouldn't be able to complete his task or to acquire worship from him and uh, to basically grab the control that he once wanted when he was in heaven to, to supplant God. Uh, so it caused Christ to avoid the cross. All right, number 181, another evaluate question. And uh, we'll give a bonus point on this one too. Uh, what aim did God the Father have in the temptation? So we know the Holy Spirit led him into temptation, so God the Father must have directed that, must have known what was going on. Why would God the Father have wanted Jesus to be tempted? Luke? He showed that he was the perfect true Messiah. Exactly. To demonstrate to everyone that he is the righteous one, that he is the perfect Son of God and the Messiah. Now there are some who disagree with that, who say that this, you know, the, it was kind of in a balance. We don't know whether Jesus would sin or not. And uh, so this was to see if he would sin. I, I think that is a denigration of Jesus as the Son of God. Because as the Son of God, even though he has a human nature, um, I, I think that it would it was an affront to his divine nature to say that he could have sinned. If Jesus could have sinned, because you can't separate the, the natures in the sense that well, his human nature does something, but his divine nature is not the only matter. You know, he's one person. And so if his human nature does something uh, that goes against his divine nature, then that, you know, it means that God could do something against his nature, uh, which is simply not true. So it wasn't to see if Jesus would sin. All right, this is the way I like to put it. It was not to see if Jesus would sin. It was to show that he couldn't. Because he didn't. All right. And we're told that there's other temptations as well. In fact, uh, one of the gospel passages seemed to indicate that he was tempted uh, during his 40 days in the wilderness of fasting. Um, it's not totally clear on that, but it may have been that that was the case even before these last three at the very end. All right, do you have any questions? Okay, that last one uh, was a bonus point. How many of you got that bonus point on the last one to show the symbolism of Jesus. Okay, so most of you got a bonus point there. Okay, let's count up the number of points that we have all together. Uh, for tomorrow, we want to complete sections 26 and 27. 26 and 27, talking about uh, the herald of Jesus, going back to John the Baptist again. And I don't think you'll find this one uh, too difficult. It's not real long. 